So we're here with the CEO of Radisys at MWC 23. Arun, great to see you. Absolutely, Gabe, it's great to see you as well. You know, we've been talking for a couple of years now. Yeah. And it's uh, such an exciting to be a time to be back in Barcelona. Yeah, good stuff. So I guess first question, how do you kind of uh, see the state of the, the mobile industry, the, the, the 5G sector? Absolutely. See, the 5G sector, I think it's in its most interesting phase right now. Because what is happening is there are there is one section of society that is already experiencing 5G. You've got the devices, you've got the networks, and that is see, mainly in the Western part of uh, the world, and of course China as well. And then you've got India, which is doing a rapid build out at this point in time. And that is another billion people that are gonna come online over the next, say, three years, something like that, right? And the kind of use cases that are coming out it's, it's really a melting pot between the Western societies and the Eastern mm -hmm. societies as to how people want to use 5G, what all they see that is possible with it. And, uh, you know, that, that consumer optimism really drives us yeah. uh, in the tech business. We want to see more people benefit from this, and that's what is exciting about it. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good point. I think um, it's interesting, actually, because often we'll get hyped about the launch, the first thing. But when I talk to a lot of operators in the US, Europe, other places, where they've got about three years of operation now, they're saying, look, we're only just getting started. We've got a lot, you know, we've got lots to do. We've got loads of opportunity. And then, uh, like you say, the, the really fast and, and, and big build outs in India are, are pretty incredible. They're kind of condensing the build out with a whole bunch of innovation right in the same phase. Absolutely. And that is the opportunity that you have if you tend to start a little bit later than the others, because you see what the other people have done and you can hit the market with a little bit more perfection and timing. Yeah. Uh, building all the use case, the device ecosystem is available. Yeah. So that's a slightly different way of capitalizing on the opportunity. Yeah. Both are exciting. Yeah. And, and like what uh, people have been telling you, the build out is just in its early phases. You know, all the greenfield stuff has happened. There is a lot more other spectrum that is available, especially brownfield. And how you really get from not depending on LTE to working in a standalone mode, mm -hmm. where you have pure 5G everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And that way you can experience it everywhere. And not when you make a voice call, you kind of go back to a legacy network, yeah, right? Yeah. All those things are in front of us. Yeah. So all that's playing out over a few years. I guess Radis is going to be involved. Tell us a bit about the, some of your activity, I guess, announcement for the show or, or other kind of big projects you're working on. Yeah, absolutely. So the last couple of years, we've always talked about the key technologies that drive us, which is disaggregation, being software driven, you know, working with open hardware and really working with the ecosystem. I am so proud of what we've accomplished in these last couple of years, because both in our 5G business and in our broadband business, this is starting to come to life now. So if I take the broadband business first, in the area of FTTX, our mm. products are getting rolled out now in commercial networks, and this is a combination of software plus software working on open hardware, which is what we believe in. And it's one thing to believe in it, it is a completely different thing to bring it to reality. Mm -hmm. Get it through the factory, install the software, put it out in the commercial network, put paying subscribers on that network and start to see that grow. That is what we're experiencing in FTTX now. Now, if you switch to 5G, this notion of software-driven networks and software having a value that can work with anybody's hardware. This morning, Gabe, we announced a software deal with Densair, where we're gonna be supplying them with CUDU software for 5G. SA mode network, the purest form, and it is going to be working with open hardware. And, and this is a pretty important milestone because it validates that disaggregation is real, software has value, software working with open hardware is meaningful, and there is, a, there is a possibility to bring all this together. So we are very excited about that announcement, and that went out this morning. So that's a big customer win for us. Yeah. Uh, so exciting times. Yeah. And so the the... the Disaggregation is obviously for a software company like Radis is obviously a good thing, right? That's that's got to be in your, you know what 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 do you like? Um, in the mobile area, the, for example, RAN and Core and, and all these different parts of a mobile network, it's been a sort of um, it's been a thing. It's fair to say a bit of a, a period of time it's taken to get to the stages you're talking about. You're already in now in, in Wireline. How's the sort of been uh, ebbs and flows, the bu bu bumps and the ups and downs? How, what kind of state do you feel you're in now with? with actually getting deployed in open systems. Because again, it's nice in theory, deployment's another thing. Yeah, yeah. See, what happens is, as in any tech industry, when you're trying to come up and kind of change how things are done, it takes a little bit of time to make sure people understand, going from the theory to practice, uh, mm -hmm. making sure things can work out in the field, et cetera. We are in the software defined space for 5G. I think what we announced today is a very big milestone. Uh, 
we are probably halfway there, right? We have proved now that it is possible to have elastic software that is running on multiple platforms. Our customers have seen that. They had a choice of platforms and they've chosen our software, right? Now the next thing is to get this made it together, like what we have done in the broadband business, to get the real product built in the factory and getting it shipped out. And that will happen here in the next 12 months or so. Yeah. So I think we have come to a very, very significant milestone. And it is very hard to come here because you've got to show people that software works. Yeah. And you've got to show people that they can depend on this and, and build a business plan around it. That is what we have achieved with this. And to get there has required a tremendous amount of investment mm -hmm. in people, in processes, in technology, in partnerships, and, and validating what we produce actually works, right? Mm -hmm. So we have come through all of that. Now it's a matter of scaling, and yeah. that is going to be an exciting thing. Yeah. And I guess it's one thing to get a system working, you've also got to get it operationalized yes. and maintained and updated and supported and and all of that. Absolutely. And this is where I think Radisys is in a unique position because we're not going to be doing this for the first time. We're already doing it for our fixed broadband networks now. And we have done it now for our media server business where we have completely transitioned that business from being an appliance-oriented business to a software-centric business. It is running in a multi-cloud environment today. We know how to run a CI-CD pipeline to keep those applications updated in real time, right? So we've got some experience with that. That, yeah. that media server is running in some 200 operator networks around the world. So we know how to transition from yeah. hardware to software. We also know how to make new software that is cloud native microservices based, integrated with open hardware. We have done it for broadband. Okay. We're going to lean on both of these experiences as we go into the 5G world. Yeah. And then a, a last question for you. You talked, um, well, we both sure. talked about how we're not, not at the end game of 5G by any means. If I look out across, you know, release 16, 17, going towards 18 and 5G advance, how does your sort of software model help uh, your customers essentially, or system developers or operators bring in all these new capabilities and features that, that you know, we, we do need to see? Yeah, and that is the beauty of working with somebody like Radisys. So we have now announced the availability of release 17 software, um, and we have shown together with Qualcomm what kind of speeds are achievable, right? And this is very, very important whether you're in OEM or ODM or an operator, that you can see a sustainable life cycle management coming through, that innovations that are in standards can actually come through a software development process and can run in the real world network. And uh, the, so this uh, announcement of Qualcomm is a pretty big milestone there. And we can continue to keep systems fresh and alive using just a software process. Good stuff, I'll have a look for both those announcements you referenced, Aaron from Radisys, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Cheers.